Welcome to this class for hamstring health, working on both flexibility and strength in the hamstrings with a little bonus of some core. So if you're ready, grab two blocks and jump on your mat. We'll start this practice working on the bottoms of the feet first. The bottoms of the feet hold a whole bunch of connective tissue called fascia that runs all the way up the legs and does affect the rest of the body. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So to open up the feet, we're gonna take something called screaming toe. And you'll understand in a few moments. So you're gonna tuck the toes underneath. And if your pinky toe is just about reaching but not quite, you can always help it so that it can fold forward so you get a nice stretch behind the toes. Also know that the heels need to fall right underneath the sit bones. Don't let them sway out to the sides or fall inwards. We want them to be as parallel as possible. Now from here you can be on hands and knees if that feels intense for you or you can start to shift your weight back until you do feel a somewhat intense sensation. We don't want pain. I'm going to stay here for about eight breaths. Now, if this is intense for you, if you need to sing a song, if you need to do something to distract yourself, you can say the ABCs, whatever it is that you need to do to get through this. Feel free to get more intense if you need to. You can always walk the hands up the thighs. Find a calmness here in the breath, even if you're not feeling that in your body. One more nice deep breath. Right, gently walk the hands down if they were on your thighs. Take your time here. Let the feet release in their own time. Don't move quickly. Let the toe relax. Let the other toe relax. Just feel what's happening in the bottoms of the feet. Sometimes the release is a little bit more intense in sensation than the stretch itself. Well, once the feet release, if you want to give a gentle stretch with the toes, if you want to spread them out, roll the ankles around, whatever you need to do for yourself, do that. And then let's move into tabletop. We'll stay up here on hands and knees and we'll start to move the rest of the body. So knees are right underneath the hips, toes track behind, hands are underneath your shoulders. Lower belly is already starting to engage to be mindful of the lower back. So on your inhale, move into cow. Inhaling, lifting the heart and tail. Exhale, curl into cat. Pressing down through the arms and legs, scoop the belly up and in. Inhale, arching the spine. Exhale, curl. Feel free to follow your own breath pattern here. You don't have to stay exactly with mine. Inhaling, lifting the heart and tail. And exhaling and curling. Take two more rounds. And one last round. One inhale, arching the spine. And one exhale curling. This gets the hips, the spine, the shoulders ready for what's to come. Now coming back to a nice neutral spine, go ahead and tuck your toes. No, we're not going to screaming toe again. We're going to move to downward facing dog. So the sit bones shoot back to, towards the heels. We're looking for a nice straight spine here. Now if your hamstrings are tight, it's okay to bend the knees. If they're more open, it's okay to straighten them. Wherever it is for your body without curling the spine without shifting forward and feeling like you're in a push-up. You want the shoulders to be nice and long and open. You want the tail to be sticking on an upward diagonal. And even here, the lower belly starts to pull up and in. This is a nice stretch for the backs of the legs and actually engages the entire body. Nice steady breath here. So moving now through our first flow, we're gonna move into a plank position. So inhale, lift the head and then shift forward. You can adjust your hands and feet as you need. Be mindful here that your feet are separated so that they are hip width apart. And also be mindful that you're not dropping in the hips. This is very common. Um, it means that the core isn't engaged, nor are the hamstrings or glutes. So pull that belly up and bring the hips in line with the shoulders. Take a nice inhale here. 
As you exhale, engage the abdominals so you're nice and stable through the waist and the core. You're going to shift your weight onto the right hand, lift the left, keep these in line, the shoulder and the hip. From here, roll as one piece. Now notice my feet, inner edge of the front foot, pinky edge of the back foot. From here, the arm can extend and lift the hips. Take a breath. Bring the hand back to the waist, engage the core, flip it back and gently release the left hand down. Take an inhale, exhale, weight comes to the left, right hand onto your waist, roll the body side plank. Let the arm extend, lift the hips, take a breath. One more inhale, exhale the hand to the waist, make sure those, that core is active. Bring yourself back to center, exhale, hand down. Take an inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. Good. So now that we've done that one time, that's a let's figure it out. So the second time we'll go through with a little bit more fluidity with the breath. So take another inhale and exhale here in down dog. And here we go. Inhale, lift the head, shift forward to plank. Exhale, shift your weight to the right hand, left hand lifts, rotate to side plank. Inhale, let the arm extend. Exhale, stay. Inhale here. Exhale, hand to the waist, roll it back to regular plank, let the left hand come down, inhale here. Exhale, shift the weight, hand to the waist, rotate to side plank. Take an inhale, take an exhale. One more inhale, exhale, hand to the waist, bring it back to plank, inhale, exhale, press it back, downward facing dog. Now you can come to child's pose too, we're gonna go one more round. All right, here we go. If you're in child's pose, come back to your downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the head, shift forward to plank. Take your exhale here. Inhale. Exhale, weight comes into the right hand. Left, ooh, <laughs> left to the waist, rotate to side plank. Inhale, lift the arm. Exhale, stay. Inhale. Exhale, hand to the waist, roll it back, regular plank. Take your inhale here. Exhale, weight to the left hand, roll it to your side plank. Inhale, extend the arm. Exhale, stay. Inhale. Exhale, hand to the waist, bring it back to regular plank. Take your inhale. Exhale, gently lower the knees, take your child's pose. Now, if that was bothersome on your wrists, give them a gentle roll, a little flip-flop. You can pump the hands a little bit just to get some movement through those joints. All right, so now that the wrists are nice and loose, come back into your plank position, take a nice inhale, and then exhale, press back to downward facing dog one more time. Good. On your next inhale, eyes lift forward, walk the feet towards the hands, lift the spine halfway, and then exhale, bend the knees and fold into ragdoll. So in ragdoll, it's okay if the knees are super bent. You can widen the feet too if it's more stable for you. You want to lengthen the spine and then exhale, let yourself melt forward. The hands can relax here. You can flip them up or if they're not quite touching the ground and that's true for a lot of people, you can bring your hands onto your elbows and just let yourself dangle from here. Now, if you're feeling this in the lower back, it usually means that you're tucking the pelvis. It's okay here to tilt the pelvis and stick it out and then let yourself fold forward. This will help to target the hamstrings a little bit more and the depth of your knees is individual to what you are feeling. You can give a little sway here from side to side. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of movement here too, but first let's come to stillness. If your fingers don't reach the mat, Use your blocks underneath your hands at whatever level. And of course, if you don't have blocks, use what you've got. If you have tall pillows, you can use those instead. So on your inhale, you're going to lengthen the spine. Look past the front of your mat towards the wall. And then exhale, gently fold. Good. On this next inhale, you're going to lift the head, but bend the knees more. Now on your exhale, straighten the legs and let the nose come towards the knees. Inhale, lift the head, bend the knees. Exhale, straighten the legs, let the, the, the nose melt to your knees. Inhale, lifting the head. Nice straight spine here, by the way. I'm only using my knees. 
So there's not much distance between the ribs and my thighs. It's not changing. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, straighten the legs. It's okay if you get a little shaky sensation in the legs here too. Inhale. And exhale. Good. We'll stay here now. You can move the blocks or whatever you're using under your hands out of the way. Inhale, lift the head. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Press through those legs. Sweep all the way up to vertical. Really inhale here. Exhale, hands come to the heart. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, hands come to the heart. Right, we'll move through one sun salutation. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, dive forward. Again, bend at the hips. Nice long spine. Let the head drop at the bottom. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Bring your hands to the mat. Step or float back to your plank. Take an inhale here. Exhale, lower down, knees, chest, chin, coming onto the belly, release the feet. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down. Inhale through tabletop. Exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Okay, so from this downward facing dog, on your next inhale, let the right leg float up and back into a three-legged dog. Now, if you notice here, my knees are bent. It honestly doesn't matter if they're straight, if they're bent, if they're really bent, if they're somewhere in between, if one is, if one isn't, doesn't matter. What matters here is their core strength because that's what we're working on. So take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, pull the thigh to your chest, curl the spine so the abdominals are engaged, point the foot, and then shift your weight forward so your shoulders are over your wrist. But don't put the foot down. Inhale, shift it up and back. We're going to do this two more times. Exhale, pick up the head, curl the spine, shift forward. Last time, inhale it up and back. Exhale, pull it in. Now we're going to change it up a little bit to get the obliques. Inhale, up and back. As you exhale, you're going to pull that right knee to the right elbow or armpit, wherever you can manage it. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, bring it across the body this time, right knee to the left elbow. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, right knee, right elbow, same side. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, going across the body. One more time each side, inhaling up. Exhale to the right elbow. Inhale, up and back. Exhale to the left. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, thigh to the chest. Now gently step that foot through between the hands. If it doesn't happen in one step, help it out. From here, gently lower the back knee and come into your low lunge. Back toe can release or not, up to you. Also, grab your blocks if you need them. We will be moving into a hamstring stretch, but first, let's let this hip flexor open up. But with the chest lifted. So you can stay with your hands on the ground, on blocks, or if you'd rather, for a little bit more intensity, the hands can come up to the thigh. But just stay here and breathe. All right, so now the hands come down to the blocks. Here we move into half monkey. This is a hamstring stretch. So you're going to take a nice inhale and then exhale. Walk your weight back so that you're on the left knee. Right leg straightens and the toes pull up. Now, in this position, if your knee is bent, really okay. As long as you feel something happening in the back of the leg, you're in a good spot. Yeah, so take an inhale to lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, hinge at the hips and walk yourself forward. We're not looking for the most intense stretch right off the bat. We will do this a couple rounds. So at first, gently get into the hamstring. Yeah, we've done some things with it already, but we don't want to force it the first round. Take one more breath here. and gently shift it forward. It's okay to pull the heel in a little bit to support your low lunge. Let the hips slide forward. Inhale, lift the heart. The more you lift the chest out of the waist, the more sensation you'll feel in the front of the hip. Good. From here, come back through neutral, shift back to the half monkey, weight onto the back knee. Front leg straightens as it will, toes pull back, and give a gentle stretch. One more breath. We're gonna go one more time. Walking forward into your low lunge. Adjust the front foot as you need. 
lengthening through the front body, meaning pulling the belly up, lengthening the chest, lifting the heart, shoulders are down. And then gently shift it back. At this time, if you want to get a little deeper, if your hamstrings are feeling more open, feel free to. Just we don't want to force into anything. We're certainly not looking for pain, but instead a healthy stretch. If your breath is affected, then you're too deep into it. Affected in a negative way, that is. Good. Take one more inhale. One more exhale. And bring both hands to the inside of that front foot. Sweep the leg back. Move your blocks out of the way. And find your way into your downward facing dog. Tucking the toes. And once you're here, notice if one side feels different from the other. As we worked on the right leg, a little bit more of opening than the left. <clears throat> Good. Now that we've worked on that first side, let's go to the second. So inhaling the left leg up and back into your three-legged dog. Exhale, thigh to the chest, curl the spine, move your shoulders over the wrists. On your inhale, bring it back to your three-legged dog, extending the top leg. Exhale, belly pulls in, curl it up. Inhale, straighten out that leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, thigh to the chest, curl the spine, shift it forward. Inhaling up and back. Last time to the center, exhale, pull it in. Inhale, up and back. Now we go to the elbows. Exhale, bring the left knee to the left elbow as high as you can bring it. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, bring the knee to the opposite side. Inhale, up and back. Two more rounds. Exhale, engage the belly as you shift. Knee towards the elbow. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, pull it in. Hopefully you're feeling the hamstring working too each time. Inhale, the leg up. Exhale, the heel comes to the sit bone. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, bring it to the opposite side. Inhale, up and back. I think that was three, so let's go for our low lunge. Stepping the foot through, helping it if you need to, and finding your low lunge. Grab your blocks if you need them. Oh, and find your low lunge. Letting your hips open up. Letting the shoulders relax. Find your breath. It's not major cardio, but it does work the cardiovascular system. Take one more big breath here. And we'll move into our half monkey. So inhaling up onto the right knee, left leg extends, and then exhale, gently fold it forward. The straighter you keep the spine, the more you'll feel it in the hamstring. But shifting forward, coming into your low lunge. Nice, gentle breath. It's okay if it's at a faster pace, as long as it's nice and smooth. And shifting back to half monkey again. If you need to take a moment to lengthen the spine and then fold, feel free. We want to take the pressure off the lower back. One last round. Gently bring yourself into the low lunge. And then bring it back for half monkey one last time. And from here, inhale, lift your head if it was down. Exhale where you need to. Bring the hand to the inside of that front leg. Sweep the leg back. Move your blocks out of the way. And either take child's pose or downward facing dog. Your choice. Take one more nice deep breath in whichever posture you're in. And then find your way onto hands and knees into tabletop. 
Now in tabletop, we're gonna stay here for a little bit just to work the hamstrings a little bit more and the glutes as well, because of course they're attached. If your wrists are not happy being in this position, feel free to move up onto the knuckles or the fists. This takes any pressure off the wrists completely and you'll I'll probably do it this way, to be honest with you. All right, so anyway, find your wrists in a comfortable position. Engage the lower belly. When we were doing the side planks before, we want that same energy between the lower ribs and the hips so that you feel a little bit of tension in the obliques. Yeah? Not that you're squeezing side to side, but you feel that abdominal engagement. Now from here, we're going to flex the right ankle and lift the heel upwards. Be very mindful here that you don't shift your weight over to the side and that the right hip drops. Keep your pelvis as parallel to the ground as you can. And also be mindful that you're not outwardly rotating because this works the glutes and it does not work the hamstring. So keeping it as square as you can, lower belly pulls up and in to minimize the sway in your lower back. Now from here, we'll do tiny pulses upwards and we'll do 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Stay here at the height of your pulse. We're going to do hamstring squeezes. We're gonna extend on the count of one and we'll go all the way up to eight. As you come in, you'll hear me count two, three, four. That's the length of the squeeze itself to really engage the hamstring. So here we go. Extend one, squeeze two, three, four. Extend two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. Let the knee float down and rest in child's pose. If you'd like, you can give a little rock from side to side here. This just helps to release the joints out just a little bit. If you need to wiggle out the hands, the wrists, the fingers, do so as well. And what we do on one side, we do on the other. So finding your tabletop once again, flexing the left foot and pressing the heel up to the ceiling, keeping your hips level, lower belly pulls up and in, spine long, keep your head in line with your shoulders, neck and spine. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hold it there at the height. We go into the eight squeezes. One, squeeze two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, squeeze, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. Float the knee down, nice gentle shift of weight and move back into child's pose. Good, give a little wiggle here if you'd like. This does actually stretch out the hamstrings and the glutes a little bit, at least at the top portion. And we will do all of that one more time on each side. So come on up onto hands and knees, moving to the right side, heel floats up and pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Hold it at the height, squeezes. Extend one, squeeze two, three, four. Extend two, squeeze three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, <clears throat> two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. Knee floats down and ease it back. Give a little wiggle here if you'd like, a little shift of weight from side to side. And one more side to go. Come up into your tabletop. Left leg lifting up, flex the ankle and pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hold it at the height. Extend one, squeeze two, three, four, two, 
two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. Let it float down. Shift it back to child's pose. Hmm. Find your downward facing dog, tuck in the toes, let the hips come up the back. And you can pedal through the feet here a little bit. This is a nice release for the legs. It'll give a little bit, a nice gentle stretch for the backs of the legs. Then come back to your neutral. Inhale, lift the head, walk your feet forward. Lift it halfway. Exhale, fold, bending the knees if you need to, and grab your blocks. You're gonna need them for the next portion of our practice. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, give those legs a nice little shake. <clears throat> Good. So we're doing all this work with the hamstrings. We do need to counterbalance it a little bit with some quad work. We don't want the hamstrings to be so tight that the quads start to feel pain and discomfort. So we're gonna take chair. And let's keep the legs in a nice parallel position. And in fact, if you'd like, you can grab a pillow or a block and slide it right above where the knee joint is. This will keep your legs nice and parallel. It also engages the inner thighs because you're holding this item up. Taking chair pose is great for here and here. So I'm gonna move to the side so that you can see the alignment for this. You'll take a nice inhale. As you exhale, you're going to bend at the hips and knees and let the sit bones shoot back, keeping the spine long. If you notice here, my toes are getting nice and light. And for added weight, the arms can extend up. As you exhale, bring the hands to your heart. Pull the belly up, drop the hips a little more. Inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, pull the hands to the heart. Inhale, extend it up. Exhale, pull it in. Three more breaths. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take whatever is between the knees, gently release it, and come up to standing. Hopefully those quads feel like they're firing off a little bit. It does not have to be super intensive. We're just looking for some activity. All right, so placing the blocks at the front. Here's the real test of strength of the hamstrings and the flexibility. So we're gonna start in a crescent pose, which is like a high lunge, if you will. Make sure that this front foot is stable. It's in front of the, it's in front of the hip, and the knee is in line with the center of the foot. Your weight can be back a little bit, that's fine, because we're actually going to shift forward and back into a balance. The back leg is also in a parallel position, ball of the foot is grounded. And just to have our hands in a nice place to control them, bring them together in front of the chest. So if you'd like to watch this the first time through, feel free and then join in when you feel ready. You'll take an inhale here in the crescent pose or the high lunge. Then as you exhale, start to hinge forward in the spine so you have a nice diagonal and press your weight to balance on the right leg. As you inhale, reconnect the back foot and come back into that crescent pose. As you exhale, you're going to shift forward and find the balance. Then gently shift it back. Now the standing leg can be bent or straight, whatever that leg can do. Your ankle may wobble a little bit, the arch of the foot may be very active. All of that is okay, they're stabilizing. They're strengthening the stabilizers. So shifting forward. Let's go one more time. Inhale as you touch into your lunge, and then exhale, shift forward. We're gonna stay in the balance here. Now this balance is good, you feel nice and secure here. Drop the left hip. If you need your fingers down on something, bring the blocks or the pillows underneath. Remember those hamstring squeezes? Guess what this floating leg is gonna do? Flex the ankle, squeeze, one, two, three, extend, squeeze, two, three, four, extend, squeeze, two, three, four, extend, squeeze, two, three, four, one more, extend, squeeze, two, three, four. Keep it in, let your fingertips come down into a standing split. You can release the energy in that top leg a little bit. You can bend the knee. This will give you a nice stretch through the hamstring. Good. From here, both feet together. Give a little shake. Inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. 
let's try that on the other side. So leave your left foot, step the right foot back, find your lunge here, hands pressed together. Working on that balance. Balance is all about the core. I'm making the coordination of the movement work for you. So take your inhale here. As you exhale, shift it forward. Try to find your balance. Hover there for a moment and then shift back. And it may take a few repetitions to find it. Shifting forward, gently shifting back. Exhaling as you shift forward, inhaling as you come back. Let's try to stay in the balance this time. Energize the top leg, flex the ankle. Here come the squeezes and squeeze. Two, three, four, extend, squeeze. Two, three, four, extend, squeeze. Two, three, four, extend, squeeze. Two, three, four, one more, extend, squeeze. Two, three, four, keep the squeeze. Fingertips come down, standing split. Whew. Oh yeah, feel those hamstrings. Lift the head, exhale, release the hand. The, that's not a hand, that's a foot. Let your foot come down and release the legs out. Good, inhale, come all the way up to vertical. And then exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Okay, so we're gonna repeat that. Uh, we're gonna take out the squeezes and we're gonna add some single leg deadlifts. So Zeus has hijacked the back of my mat, as you can see. So I'll do the best I can with him there. All right, so finding your crescent pose, <laughs> Gross, Zeus. Making sure that your blocks are set up in front of you in case you need them for balance. We're gonna take the same weight shifts to move forward to find that balance, which is called warrior three on the right leg. So take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, shift the weight and find the balance. If you need to go a few times, do that to find it. My magic number is always three. I'm gonna stay here now and find that balance. You're going to fold forward into that standing split. From there, bend the standing knee slightly. This engages the hamstrings and drop the left hip a little bit. Inhale, lift the head, neck, and shoulders. Let the hands float back by your hips. That's one. Dropping back down or lowering down into the standing split, letting the torso come down so you get a little stretch. Inhale, lift the head, bend the knee so that you're nice and stabilized. Energize and pull up. Make sure this back leg is also very active. Lowering down. Standing split. Lifting the head, bend the knee slightly, engage the top leg. Pull it up to that balance. Lowering back down. That's the last one. We'll take three. I'm sure by now, if you're feeling anything like I am, hamstrings and the glutes are a little bit fatigued, which is all good. That's what we want. A little bit of fatigue, not complete fatigue. Good. From here, bend the knees. Inhale, sweep it up. And then exhale, bring the hands to your heart. Good. So taking that crescent pose on the other side. <clears throat> Excuse me, Zeus. Let's move your tail, buddy. All right. So finding that balance, take your inhale. As you exhale, start to shift the weight forward. Reconnect the back foot. Find the connection. Exhale, shift it forward. Inhale, coming to your crescent, and then exhale, shift it, find the balance. Good. Dropping the right hip a little bit if you can. Then as you exhale, bring the fingertips down to the mat, find that standing split. Energize the top leg. Inhale, lift the head. Exhale, bend the knee if it's not already. Press through that leg, lift up into the balance. You can straighten this leg if it can. And then gently exhale, lower down into the standing split, letting the head drop. Inhale, lift the head, find the long spine first, then bend the knee, then lift up the torso. You may feel this in the lower back as well if you have weakness there. All it's doing is strengthening. As long as you're not feeling pain, you're good. And gently lower it down, both feet onto the mat, bend the legs, pedal through them, whatever you need to do to help release that out. The 
bend both knees. Inhale, come all the way up to vertical. Exhale, hands come through the heart. We're going to go through one sun salutation. This helps to neutralize things. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, fold forward. Again, bend the knees here if you need to, dropping the head. Inhale, lift halfway. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold hands. Come down to the mat. Find your way back to your plank. Take a nice inhale here. Exhale, lower down. Knees, chest, chin. Release the feet. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, press it back. Find your child's pose. <laughs> and gently roll up through the spine and find your way to a seated position. Any way that makes sense to you is fine. So bringing the legs out in front, sitting up nice and tall. We're going to go through a series of stretches for the backs of the legs. You can roll up your mat, sit on that. You can take a block and sit on that or a pillow or a rolled up blanket and put it under your sit bones so that you feel nice and upright through the spine. If you don't, that means the pelvis is tucked and you won't get the best stretch possible for your hamstrings. So go ahead and sort that out. Then with the legs out in front, we want a little bit of space between the legs. They don't have to be glued together. Naturally, our thigh bones come out of the hips and they are slightly separated. So this is a more natural way to stretch the legs. Make sure that the heels are down and it's okay if the knees are slightly bent, as long as you feel something through the legs. So inhale, sit up nice and tall, pull the belly up and in. And then as you exhale, again, bending at the hips, move the hands forward. And you can hold on to any part of your leg that you can reach. Or if you have another towel with you or something else you want to wrap it around your feet, you can do that too. Keeping the spine long here will bring more attention to the hamstrings. If you curl forward, you may feel more intensity. Just make sure that it's not focused on the lower back. Take one more full breath here. And inhale, lift the head if it's down and then exhale, gently release. So from here, you're going to open the legs up to the width of your mat. So the heels are right on the edges. You know, sitting up nice and tall. And then exhale, folding forward once again. Again, hands can go wherever. If the knees are bent, they're bent, as long as you feel sensation in the backs of your legs. See if you can let go of the shoulders, let go of the face and jaw, and just breathe into the stretch. Sometimes the legs shake a little bit, the more you can control your breath, the easier it'll make it on those hamstrings. And inhaling, coming all the way up. Exhale where you need. We're gonna go again, opening the legs up just a little bit wider. Excuse me, Zeus, we're gonna move your legs out of the way. Sitting up nice and tall as you exhale, fold forward. Now the hand placement here, you have two choices. If you bring the hands to the legs, gravity will naturally take the torso forward. If that's too intense and you want to control it a little bit more, then bring your hands in front of you. Just make sure you don't lock the elbows. You want them to be soft so that there can be a little bit of gravity pull, just to help the legs open up. on your inhale gently come up to vertical exhale where you need and we're going to open up one more time even if it's just a millimeter more of width that you have go for it if you're at your most intense then just stay there and we're going to do one more forward fold so sitting up nice and tall as you exhale fold it forward same thing here if the hands are to the side gravity will pull the torso forward if you want more control bring the hands in front Do your best not to compare yourself to others in this stretch. It's, it's a big thing, especially if you're doing competitive sports to want to compete with others. And that's natural, it's a human response. But just know that you have one body and if you force yourself into anything, your one body is going to tell you about it later. So treat yourself kindly and worry only about being better than yourself the day before. On 
on your inhale, gently bring yourself back up to vertical. Exhale where you need to. We're going to come out of this very gently. You can either use your hands on the legs and carry them in or just little baby steps, bring them to center and give them a nice little shake. So now if you have anything underneath you, if you've rolled your mat, if you have a pillow, cushions, block, whatever it is, take it out from underneath your sit bones. We're going to, once again, work the core. <clears throat> so let's start by sitting upright on the sit bones, lengthening through the spine. We're going to take boat pose. And if you do Pilates, you'll know this as teaser. So boat pose and or teaser is on the sacrum, the flat portion of your pelvis. So you're not actually up on your sit bones. We just start here so that the spine has the opportunity to lengthen. From here, pull the belly in and tuck the pelvis. My chest is staying open, right? So you're balancing on the flat portion. Then walk the feet in a little bit so you have a little bit more control. The hands are here as a gentle support. I'm not grabbing and holding for dear life, but I'm keeping the elbows out so the chest stays open. You can balance with the toes touching. You can bring the legs to 90 degrees, or if you do practice this already and want to go for the full shebang, go for it. I'm going to stay here for about three more breaths. Good. From here, cross the ankles and gently fold forward. It's a little break for the body. Gently roll up and we'll do that one more time. No, I lied. We're going to do that two more times because what? My magic number is three. Rolling back onto your sacrum, letting the legs float to wherever you can maintain them. If you prefer, you can extend the arms out. This makes it more challenging. Just be careful you're not collapsing in the chest. Keep it nice and open. One more big inhale, then exhale, cross the opposite ankle in front and gently fold forward. You can let everything go, even the shoulders here. One more time, rolling back onto the sacrum, letting the legs float to wherever you can maintain it. Now from here, we're going to roll down onto the spine, controlling it as we do so. So if you need extra support, bring the hands to the backs of the legs. Gently, slowly roll down through the spine. It helps to look at your belly button here as you go. If you go through a fast part, it's okay. Just catch yourself again. I think I'm rolling onto a dog's foot. Yes, I am. <laughs> and gently lay flat on your spine. Once you're down, feet come flat onto the mat. You can take a nice deep breath here in through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay. So now we're going to work into some bridge squeezes. It'll work the glutes, but it also works the hamstrings. So in this position, make sure that the heels are right underneath your sit bones. And if your arms are of an average length, the fingertips generally will brush the heels. That's how you know you have a good distance apart. But if you have shorter arms, then this trick doesn't work. Okay, so the arms are down by your sides. We're going to tuck the pelvis so that the abdominals are engaged here. And that's all we're going to do with the spine. The rest of it is gonna stay stable so that the core stays engaged. From here, press down through the heels, lift the hips up, and we're gonna stay and squeeze the same count as we did with those hamstring squeezes. So as you inhale, you're going to now lower down and then exhale, squeeze it up. Squeeze, two, three, and really squeeze, four. Lower down and squeeze, two, three, four, that's three, lower down, and squeeze, four, two, three, four, lower down, squeeze, five, two, three, four, lower down, six, two, three, four, lower down, seven, two, three, four, lower down, eight, two, three, four, we're going to two more, Lower down, nine, two, three, four, lower, and 10, two, three, 
four. Gently bring the hips all the way down to the mat. Walk the feet out to the width of the mat. Arms can move out of the way and gently windshield wiper from side to side. Good. So from here, we're gonna come back to center. Re-establish the same position so the heels are under the sit bones. But this time we're gonna walk the inner, inner edges of the legs together so they're nice and engaged. The inner thighs are engaged. This is more on the Pilates side of things, but guaranteed this will work the backs of the legs. So <clears throat> we're gonna take bridge in the same way, engage the core, then lift the hips up so you have a nice straight line here or the best that you can manage. Shift your weight over onto your left foot, the right leg will extend. Keep the knees together. We don't want the toes upright, we want them squeezing. Then from here, keep the hips level. There's gonna be a tendency to want it to drop. <laughs> Zeus, can you stay still, please? We're gonna keep the hips nice and level. So you're gonna lower the hips, but don't rest them down at the mat. You're gonna come close without touching and then squeeze, two, three, press it up and down and squeeze, two, three, four, three, squeezing, two, three, four, lower down. This is four, two, three, four, lower down and five, two, three, four, lower down, six, two, three, four, lower down, seven, two, three, four, lower down. We're only going to do eight this time. Eight, two, three, four, lower all the way down. Release the legs. Give them a little windshield wiper from side to side. All right, so bringing it back. Inner edges of the legs and the feet coming together as close as you can manage. Feet flat. Start to engage the abdominals so that the core is engaged. You're nice and stabilized through the spine. Then lift the hips up. Shift the weight onto the right leg. Left leg extends. Knees stay together. And here we go. Lower and squeeze. Two, three, four, and lower. Two, two, three, four, and lower. Three two, three, four, and lower, four, two, three, four, and lower, five, two, three, four, and lower, six, two, three, four, and lower, seven, two, three, four, and lower, last one, eight, two, three, four, and lower, good, let the feet come down, give a little windshield wiper from side to side, you can get your arms out of the way, however you want to get them out of the way. And let the legs dangle up in the air. Give them a good shake. I know this may feel silly, but it's really good for the legs. That fascia, that connective tissue that I was talking about, we just did a lot of work with it as well as, well as the muscles. So we want to let it go. Am I boring you, Zeus? <laughs> okay. So from here, we'll give a nice stretch to those inner thighs. We'll take happy baby. So the knees bend, heels go up towards the ceiling. We have roughly a 90 degree angle here. And if your knees are wide, it's easier to bring the elbows to the inside and then you could hold on to the ankles, feet, or toes. If your knees are a little bit more narrow, then you could bring the hands behind and you can let the heels fall. As long as you're feeling a stretch through the inner legs and a little bit in the hamstrings, that's a good thing. You can even give a little rock here from side to side. And if you want even more hamstring stretch, you can give one leg bent and let the other one straighten out. You'll feel that it pretty intensely through the back of the leg. And do one at a time. Or if you have the flexibility here, you can take both legs at the same time. Just make sure here that your spine is flat on the ground so that your head is connected and so is your tail. If you find that you are in this curled up position, Bring something under your head so that the pelvis can come flat. Good. Well, from here, bring the bottoms of the feet together. Let the knees go out to the side. You can hold on to the feet, the ankles or the shins, and let the heels fall down towards your pelvis. Knees can come out to the side. This lets everything relax. So my legs are hanging off my arms and my arms are hanging off my legs. There's not much energy being used here, mostly in the hands. Then keep the bottoms of the feet moving toward one another and let go, coming into a reclined butterfly. Hands can rest wherever you'd like them to rest. And 
nice gentle breath. Bring your hands down to your outer legs. Use the hands to close the legs and find your way into your Shavasana. Does Zeus give me any space here? Not really, okay. <clears throat> then from here, let the legs extend long and we'll take a Shavasana. Letting yourself rest and recuperate is super important, not only for your body, but for your mind, for your spirit, for your energy. The body needs to absorb all the work we've just done, all the breathing we've just done. So allow yourself to take rest.
start to deepen your breath. Find energy in your fingers, toes, wrists and ankles, gradually waking the arms and legs. I'll let the arms extend up overhead. You can bring the legs together underneath you and give yourself a nice long stretch. And from here, bring the knees in towards your chest. Give a little rock from side to side. Then roll onto your right side, coming into fetal position, using your bottom arm as a pillow for your head. From here, gently press yourself up to a seated position. Eyes closed, place one hand on your heart and one on your belly. Just take a few moments here and check in with your breath. Although our practice today may not have been a traditional yoga practice, it is still practicing a mind, body, and breath connection. So it's nice to check in afterwards. It's also nice to give a moment of gratitude, something you're thankful for today. Hope your hamstrings feel healthy and happy and have a beautiful day. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me. If you like the class, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And be sure to click the bell for email notifications when new videos are released. Let me know how you felt after doing this practice in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, if you have a request for a specific focus or tutorial, please ask in the comments below. Please share this video if you know someone who might enjoy it. Be well and remember to breathe. See you next time.